Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Greetings in the precious name of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto thee, people of God, says, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm so grateful to see the saints of the Lord. Faithful missionary Olivia, blessed Sister Goodland, his brother Mark and Sister Deborah. The Lord bless you and keep you. Sister Rose, the Lord bless you on tonight. The Lord keep you. God bless you, Sister Tiffany, Minister Saunders. The Lord be our strength. The Lord be our way. In Him we actually live. We actually move and have our being. He's our keeper. The Lord is our strength. Sister Lorraine Dukes, grateful for the privilege to lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. He is God who made heaven and the earth. Our God is amazing. He is worthy of our praise, our adoration, our worship, our appreciation to him. Garment. God is so good to us. Sister Thomasina, good evening. And the Lord bless you. Sister Regina, missionary woman of God. Sister Juanita, all the way in South Carolina. Good to see you on tonight. God bless you, Sister Erica. The Lord keep you. The Miracle Girl is on tonight. Remember, we are liking and we are hitting our share button. Let's be evangelistic tonight. Hit your share button. Let them know that we are studying tonight. We are seeking the ingredients of revival. Thank God for the grace of revival when he grants it for us. Deacon Barker, Missionary Rochelle Wells, Sumter, North Carolina. Thank you. God bless you, Sister Sheila Gray. God is good. Sister Yolanda, God is good to us. Greetings in the name of the Lord. I love to greet the saints of the Lord. We're greeting one another, yes, with holy expressions. Yes, warm expressions. Mother Marcia Gordon, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is our prayer is our prayer. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is our prayer. We're gathering for study tonight. And grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We are blessed of the Lord. Thank God for Brother Dan Stewart, Sister Josette, Mother Simpson in North Carolina. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. Sister Norgia, we're hitting our share button, like button. We're making a comment. The Deacon Eric May, praying for you, sir. Praying for you. Sister Benai, here we are tonight. Ready to dive into the word of the Lord. We have our special guests in the studio. We're ready to dive into the Holy Scripture. We are blessed people. The psalmist says, blessed is the man who chooses to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, refuses to stand in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the law. He refuses to sit in the seat of the scornful. Yes, and in his law does he meditate day and night. This person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It shall bring forth fruit in its season, and whose loose leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever that he does or she does, it shall prosper. We shall prosper in the way of the Lord. We shall prosper in the way of the Lord. Missionary Carmelita, Sister Vanessa. Missionary Vanessa, good to see you. It's time to approach the throne of grace. We're symbol tonight thanking God for healing, for life, for joy, for peace, for balance, for our relationships, for our loved ones. We are believing the Lord. We're praying for our nation, praying for the situation in New York City, in the subway stations, this is praying time. This is praying time. Let's prepare our hearts now as we begin to turn towards heaven. God bless you, First Lady Judith Griffin. The Lord bless you. My warm regards to my beloved friend, Bishop Kevin Griffin. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. Is our prayer is our prayer. We're turning towards heaven tonight. It's time to pray. And I know you have those that you are interceding for. Our God, our God. He's reading the chats. He's reading the chats. Just place their names there. Bless you, woman of God. Bless you, woman of God. Missionary Jones. Bless you, woman of God. We're hitting the like button. We're making a comment. And we are sharing on tonight. Yes. Missionary Williams, we're remembering Mother Davis tonight. Remembering Lisa Hester and her family. Place their names in the chat. In the name of the Lord. Remembering Mother Ford. We bless God tonight. Mother Barbara Davis. We are remembering in prayer tonight. Our God reads the prayer chat. He reads the prayer chat. So glad to be back in the assembly with the saints of God tonight. But I am grateful. Remembering Isaac Rogers. Remembering, amen, Brittany Dukes. Sister Lorraine, we are praying for your blessed daughter. Thank God, our God is able. Remembering AJ as he battles through and navigates through this season. And God will let it be done. Remembering Missionary Baker. Remembering Sister Kayla Green. In the name of the Lord. Father God, now in Jesus' name. Celine Mayo. Today, in the name of the Lord. Eloise Knight. God, you read. Here we are, Lord, at the throne of grace. Lord, we're seeking your face. We're asking you, Father, to have your way. We give you praise. We extend our gratitude 
all that you have done for us. We thank you for keeping us and bringing us through this season. What an amazing God you are. Here we are gathered today as we remember Cousin Linda, those that are hospitalized. Lord, let it be so. In the name of the Lord, let it be so. In Jesus' name, we thank you. God, we look to you. You have instructed us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help comes from you. So we pray. God, we know that you're able. We know that you can. So let it be so. Let it be so. And let your will be done. Healing to our land. Thank you, Father, for resting this virus. Yea, God. The situation. Lord, in the train station to the MTA today. Breathe on our nation. Give us calm, we pray. In Jesus' name. God, you're able to do all things. Brother Hyman today. Lord, the aging saints, the sages of the kingdom, keep them, I pray, Mother Zuckerman. God, we know you hear us. We pray together tonight. In the name of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Ara today. God, do it. Malia today, God do it. Michelle Coleman, Juanita Thomas, God you're able. God you're able. God you're able. We thank you. You said if we ask, touch and agree, you would do anything that we ask. For your father, let it be so. God, your will be done. Your will be done. Look on our efforts tonight. Lord, as we open the scripture, we seek you for our responsibility to revive. God, let it come together. We shall be mindful of you. We shall be careful tonight to give you praise, honor, and glory. There's none like you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. Look on our beloved mayor. Look on the city in which we live. God, show your ableness. Show your ableness. And we will be mindful of you. We'll be careful tonight to give you the praise, to give you the honor give you all of the glory in jesus name we pray thank god and amen and amen tonight we want to thank god for the privilege of prayer we thank god for his grace and his mercy that has been extended towards us our god is good to us church family i'm overjoyed uh, to see you in the gathering on tonight. I get to touch and call your names. I miss being in service on this past Sunday. And tonight I have a little sinus irritation, uh, but I wanted to be in the gathering with you tonight. So don't mind, my, mind me wiping my nose or wiping my eyes tonight. Um, we're here to do the work of the Lord together. And our God is gonna help us do so we thank God for our executive pastor on tonight and to all of the elders and ministers of the Lord's Church, every missionary and deacon, those leaders of the Lord that have surrendered their lives to the Lord, our beloved church mother. Our special guest tonight is in the studio. We thank God for Pastor Richard Garner. He is our beloved brother, one of the finest kingdom servants who has given his life and service to the Lord one of my favorite preachers and teachers of scripture. He's here tonight with us, Alan Memorial and each church family. We are blessed to have the man of God with us on tonight. 
We thank God tonight as we begin to work through and continue to move through our study on the book of Joel. But before we move there, I want to just make a few announcements. Um, there will be a event calendar coming out by email and also a text message uh, showing you the events that will be coming up um, through the month of July. There's a lot going on. We are attempting to stand up to ministries. And I want to thank God for uh, each and every one of you in the service of the Lord, uh, for your liberality, for your faithfulness, for your determination to love the Lord, and to God be all of the glory. On May 1st, uh, on May 1st will be the first Sunday of May, of uh, the men's ministry will be standing up. Uh, they will be in charge and uh, they will be dealing with the power of fellowship on uh, May 1st at 11 a.m. Our own elder Richard McCaffrey will be speaking. Uh, the men will be sponsoring upholding the service. Uh, the Saturday before, we have committed that we're going to deal with male issues, male issues this year. And uh, we're dealing with uh, male health for the year of 2022. And uh, we are lining up our speakers from now to the end of July. I've had a conversation with Dr. Moss, uh, who is a clinical psychologist, a, a career U.S. military man. He's also a professional counselor in the military. He will be dealing with male mental health. Uh, that will be via Zoom. It will be 9 o'clock to 10.15. We will not be out there all morning. But if you want to begin to touch the issues, all men, we're calling all men, invite them, invite them and let them know uh, that we are moving in the way of ministry. Also remember that we are approaching Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a special time of the year. The hand that rocks the cradle actually does rule the world. And our speaker for Mother's Day will be the evangelist, Andrea Wilma. She will be our speaker. But the Saturday before, the, there will be a Mother's Day brunch at the Noma Social Restaurant. And they will be honoring a series of uh, distinct, distinct women in the church fellowship. I believe uh, 50, 55 or so have already registered. So ladies, uh, prepare to be there. Prepare to be there prepared to be uh, at Mother's Day weekend. And we know that Family and Friends Day is here on July 9th. We're going out to Holiday Hills, going out to Holiday Hills. And uh, registration, I believe, is closed. But we want to remember by May 15th, May 15th, all of your registrations must be paid. Um, and uh, I think there are about 242 of us that are registered and ready to go. So we're looking forward uh, to our time together in fellowship. We thank God for his goodness and his grace. Look out for those event emails so that you can keep up and be informed. If we do not have, if we do not have your communication, please make sure that you do so. Leave your cell number with the administration office or your email, and we'll make sure that you will. Uh, be in our database. Well, tonight I am uh, grateful again for life. I thank God for healing, for his strength. I want you to know that I am doing well and that God is keeping me. And Lady Carol is uh, doing everything that she can to keep me constrained. And tonight I'm out, maybe a little premature, uh, but I am glad to be here tonight uh, to be in Bible study. Looking forward to our Easter uh, service on this coming Sunday. And on this Friday, we have the seven last words, seven last words of Jesus on the cross. This is an in-person service. We pray that you will be there. You will be there to hear these seven dynamic speakers address the expressions of Christ from the cross. So we're looking forward to our fellowship time together. But let's dive into our study tonight. We have been uh, addressing and reading and studying the book of Joel. You've got your reading assignments. And um, Pastor Ellie, Professor Ellie, Professor Ellie uh, dealt very, very, very proficiently 
uh, last week about the issue of repentance and the need for us uh, to repent and the power of it. Church, the grace of repentance, it really is an amazing blessing for the people of God, for any people. Uh, this is really an amazing and powerful study that reveals and models our response and behavior to God in the toughest times of our life. And as a people, we must know the value of repentance. We must know the value of repentance before God. If there is any shame in it, it is before God because we have let God down, because we recognize that we have strayed away from him. So this short book, this short book helps us to see the power of a people that repent before the Lord. God's response is merciful and is actually filled with grace. Repentance is hope for the future. It provides a hope for our future. So the church, you and I, people of God, our e-church family, everyone that's on the line, the church must maintain clarity concerning biblical and scriptorial truth about such conditions. A nation's collective behavior, behavior it actually conditions the response of God. Let me say it again. A nation's collective behavior conditions the response of God. What do you mean, Pastor? The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to any man. So, no, let's look at verse 19. After the call to repentance in the previous chapters of chapter 2, the Lord makes a promise to his people. In verse 19, he said, the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer, I will no longer make you a, a reproach among the nations. So our study displays God's love and his commitment to his people. God is committed to us. And the final verse of chapter two, or verses of chapter two, are really noteworthy of our digging in tonight and discussion. It brings us to the importance of the spirit. It reveals our need to be spiritual, to receive the spiritual manifestations of God in our lives. This is such a non Oh, should I say, we're so bi biblically off center and the natural manifestation of God in the spirit to recover and to revive and restore the church is being strained. So Joel introduces the fulfillment of God's intimate relationship with his people in the spirit. It is, it is spiritual and deeply intimate, this text. It is also relational. It, 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 yet God holds this people also to conditional responsibility. We have conditional responsibility. Even today, God is holding you and I to conditional responsibility before him. God expects things and responsibilities and proper responses from you and I. It is so critical. Let's took a slide. For Joel 2, verse 28 and 29. It says, It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall dream dreams. Yes, your old men shall dream dreams. I'm sorry. And your young men shall see visions. And also my men servant and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Notice that God guarantees his promise and his involvement. He says, it will come to pass. That simply means that it will happen. That simply means it will happen. 
it will happen. If God said it, it will happen, but it will happen with condition. The key word for this verse is afterward. Afterward. We live in an era without a sense of condition or the reality of consequences. It's a very fuzzy era. We live without the sense of the need for fulfilling conditions before moving forward and the reality of consequences for things that we do. This mindset, this mindset dismisses our sensitivity for the value of process and procedure and development that's mandated before God. So some things cannot be released from heaven until we meet conditions meet conditions or should i or should i say there are some things that cannot happen until we fulfill our responsibility before god the word afterward i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh this distinction is very important for you and i in our study we must remember that we are as much spirit as we are flesh God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So tonight I am motivated by the movement and the acknowledgement of Judah, God's people's response to their need for God. This is a lesson for us. We need God. There was widespread consensus caused by the devastation that was among them. They agreed that they needed God to do one thing for everyone, and that was to save them. They agreed that they needed to be saved. And the promise of hope now emerges in this crisis. Because if God be for us, the church family, who can be against us? There seems to be a disparity in this understanding that we need God to save us. This is acknowledgement of him. We must be conscious that we need God. Church, we also must be spiritual. The amazing grace of God in response to their, to their acknowledgement, their actually lament, their repentance, assures rest, restoration and this abundant fertility that is spoken to us in verse 19. In this promise is the return of the cycle of rain and the cycle of harvest. Their harvest will again be plentiful enough for the people to eat and be satisfied. God does that, that the people will be satisfied and not be put to shame. God does that. The people will then praise the name of the Lord, recognizing God as their source of sustain. We do that. We do that. So their titles, their titles and assignments didn't exempt them from their responsibility uh, by God before God. They wanted God to save them. And we need and we must want God to save us. We must want God to save us. The question is how, how do we move forward in this season of displacement? As Judah, we need restoration. We need God to restore cycle, the cycle of rain, and the cycle of harvest in our homes, our families, our jobs. These are big questions tonight. Have we fallen too far away? What does revival look like in our community, in our local assemblies, even in our families? When God pours out his spirit, it's about the future. When God pours out his spirit, it's about the future. It's about what we have not yet seen. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. They shall foretell what has not been seen. Your old men shall dream dreams. They will remember the goodness of God. The young men shall see visions. They shall have future foresight. And it shall come to pass, it will happen, that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Here we are tonight, digging into the scripture, picking up the scriptorial paradigm and model. How will we know revival in this season? Pastor Ellie, come on. Let's talk about this a little bit. Please don't mind my wiping. All right. Yes. Yes, indeed. Good, Good material, Pastor. Thank you. We, we, we need God. Yeah. We need God. We and, need God. And, uh, you know, it, it, it sounds... Uh, I. It sounds, I'll put it this way. I think for, for many in, in the context that we're in, this you, you often speak about a postmodern uh, reality that we're in. You know, those words sound a bit foreign to many people. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it is because uh, people have, have, have receive this wrong information and are inclined to believe in this wrong information that that human beings are independent, that that we are capable of solving our own problems. And we're not. No. We need God. We need God. We need God. So so the logic is actually inverted. Biblically we see that we are dependent on God, that we need God uh, for our sustenance, for restoration, for renewal, indeed for revival, we need God. As simple as that, Pastor. It is simple as that. I was amazed at the movement of these people in consensus that they recognize that we need God to save us. Mm. We need God to save us. And there's such a disparity of theological understanding today about whether we need God at all. And, uh, and this is a major problem. The devastation moved them to, to a consensus of the fact that they all needed to assemble themselves in a place where God could respond to them, where God could respond to them. Uh, this is a major challenge for us as, as we move forward and begin to try to find the different requirements right, and responsibilities of this particular of this particular season, because he says he pours out his spirit afterward. Mm. Afterward, there was a condition yes. that Israel met in order to realize the spiritual renewal and revival that God had promised to them, and I believe that the same actually uh, is required for you and I. I believe the same is required for you and I. Yes. So for you and I. We have Pastor Ghana in, and I want to bring him in now. Um, and uh, Pastor, welcome. God bless. God bless. Good to be here. Glad you're here. And Amen. We're talking about this need for revival. Um, yes. I'm careful. Yes, overcritical of, of the church and the kingdom. I'm careful with it. Um, but uh, we're not in the best place that we've ever been. No, no. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm struck as I was looking and reading um, in the second chapter of Joel as he was speaking. And when we look at that, he had already pronounced judgment on them. Yeah. He was telling them the judgment of coming upon them because they actually have turned away from him. But yet in the midst of all that judgment, in verse 14 of the second chapter, he says, who knoweth? if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind, even in the midst of judgment, God was giving them an opportunity that they could turn back to him, as you said, spoke and uh, uh, Pastor Valentin talked about that repenting and turning is so important. And now we, uh, e even in a different uh, era, it, it's very important for us to understand that if we don't repent, as you said, if we don't become responsible to what we have to do, the, the blessings, the flowing, the spirit is not going to come. And I, I, I think that we as a church now, looking at everything that's going on, we have to live with the motto and cry out to the Lord, Lord, revive us 
or we'll die. Revive us or we'll die. We have to be that desperate. We, it's like you said, we, uh, and uh, uh, Pastor Valentin said, I cannot be independent. It's, it's no way possible that I'm going to be able to make it. And so our cry is in desperation to him, Lord, you have to revive us or we're going to die. You know, and uh, Jeremiah said, yeah, you, you, you substituted uh, broken cisterns uh, instead of the fountain of life. And that's where we have to get to. And I think that's what God has allowed us to go through to see this, that we need him so desperately. And again, if he could, even in the midst of judgment there, still there was hope. We haven't come under this uh, stringent justice a judgment that they have, but we're in desperation. And if we don't act in desperation, it's going to be to our own downfall and destruction. Let me say, I was reading, I've been dealing with um, Revelations chapter two, when uh, he was speaking to the church of Ephesus and he told them everything they were doing and uh, were fine, but he said, I have ought against you. You've left your first love. And, and I, I was telling our church, I said, if you look at the resume of what they did, any church that had a resume like that would be great. That's a good church, trying apostles, doing all that. He said, but you left your first love. So they, were, they weren't doing wicked things. They hated evil. They tried apostles, but they left their first love. And then the words that hit me bad, he said, but repent or else. Uh -oh. and I think that's where we are as a church. He's saying, repent or, or else. We're going to suffer the consequences of not repenting. So repentance is is paramount for yes. for the kingdom's understanding, yeah, and I and I, I believe it's so. It seems to become a lost practice, yes, um, of the kingdom. But to, to move God, it, it's uh, Pastor Ellie, You really worked on that last week about this uh, importance of lamenting and crying out to mm -hmm. God, and that there's such a need, such a need for us, the church, to move forward. You know, you know, you know. I've been on this thing about the um, about the commission. The church has become um, filled with layered and compounded compilations of a lot of things that we do, mm. um, but we seem to have misplaced the requirement, and the responsibility to make disciples of men. Yes, you know, actually leading people to the cross. Yes, uh, to Jesus Christ. And oh, you know, um, and that measure, there were always measurable results, you know, that our lives would change for him. And they sung songs like, I looked at my hands and they were new. Yes. I looked at my feet and they were too. Um, that's almost gotten sucked up in a traditional kind of mindset, <laughs> uh, not to step backwards, um, but lives were changed and uh, vessels were. And vessels were anointed and used for God to advance the kingdom of God. And uh, I said something, um, I believe the last time I preached that we have a responsibility to deliver this next generation, you know, uh, into position for the kingdom of God. And I believe that we're behind. We're behind. And it may be because of this same spirit of concession and, uh, and compromise and, and requirements that. No, there, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no avoiding the process. I was talking to a, a good friend, Bert, Bert Dow Stewart, the other day. He said something that was almost mind blowing to me. And, you know, we're, we're older now. We, he was my roommate in college. We were the Cub Scouts together, basketball, you know, and all that sort of stuff. He said, he said, Pastor. He says, you know, my boys are grown now, and he said, but he said the generation is a little different than we were. He says. Um, he said, they just want the template. They don't want the process. Right. And I said, like, whoa. He says, they just want the template. 
You know, they don't want to run the lines. They don't want to, <laughs> you know, they don't want to do the, you know, the hundred push-ups a day. They don't just give me the template, give me the ball. I just want to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and and that same mindset, I think, is is, is dropping into the developments and progressions of the kingdom. You know, how do we yes. get around that? How do we move forward with that? Um, boy, we have a big challenge in front of us. Pastor Ellen? Yeah, I, I, I wonder, and I'll, I'll just pose this uh, for, for Pastor Garner and and also you, Pastor. Um, uh, so, so um, Pastor Garner, you mentioned uh, repentance a couple of times and Right, we, we discussed some of that last week. So I'm wondering, and this is the question, I, I'm, I, I know you'll shed uh, some deep insight here uh, for all of us. So the, the question is, what does repentance look like? Oh. Um, so, so, you know, what, 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 what does it entail of? So when someone repents, what happens and, and, and how do we see the fruits of someone's repentance? That's a follow-up question. So, so what does it look like, and what are its fruits? Well, well, one thing it it I think it, it it's us realizing that as um, the prophet told David, you haven't sinned against. Um, men, you've sinned against God. And the, the, the repentance is that, that, that changing, that conviction in the heart, that changing, that grief, being grieved to understand what I've done against God, what I've done against God. And that's where it has to start. Not actually dealing with the act but it's what it does between me and god and so that there has to be that transforming element in that when we talk about turning there is a decisive move and decision that a person has to make it it it, it, it and it, it some it, that's why uh, one of the you know the meanings is to turn because I've got to turn away from that which I either am connected to or looking at, that that thing no longer matters anymore. And I think people are the mistake of being sorry, godly sorrow, and, and things like that, but it's an actual turning. And even when John spoke, John the Baptist, he told them, the only way I would know that you have repented, you bring fruits, of repentance, this there has to be that transformation and changing, that turning, and and that understanding of what what that whatever I am doing, how does that affect God? I know I might have hurt you, but it's more important that I understand how did I affect him, and that's the first thing that has to come into play in our in our hearts and it's uh, 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 it's like David said I, you, you, I've sinned against heaven it's you God I've done all other things were bad but the most important thing it was you it was you and I think when that's where we have to begin to see um, when we talk about a repentance and turning um how does this affect him? Now, let me say this too, because this just comes to me. When I understand what it took to save me, when I understand what my sins, our sins did to him on the cross, then when I look at myself now, disobeying and sinning, it's almost, wow, I'm almost doing the same thing, all right? And and, and people don't realize that. And you, you, you know, we qualify sin, stuff. but wait a minute, it's, it's, it's really just, it's really rebellion, that's all it is. It's, it's, it's rebellion, it's, it's, it's like what you said again, this 
this this this desire to be independent of God. And and uh, one uh, uh, writer properly coined the phrase that Adam committed cosmic treason in the garden. He he committed treason and. People don't, they don't think of or look at sins in, in that term. And I, I don't want people to feel overly condemned and things like that. But I do want us to know it's our sins that hung them on that cross like that. Yeah, Jesus. Wow. wow. And that's, that's a really that's a powerful question, um, Pastor Ellie. Um, this, this turning turning from our ways and turning towards God is what repentance mm. looks like. And repentance always has measurables. It has measurables. It's more than just verbal expression. Yes. It's followed by deed. It's followed by recommitments and restorations of devotions and passions and love for God. Uh, sin is just not an arbitrary expression. Pastor Ghana is absolutely, that's really powerful, man. It's our sins that put the Lord on that cross. You know, and that final atonement, you know, it, it, it's key because, you know, if if, if, if Darrell Stewart is right, <laughs> if Darrell Stewart is right, you know, um, the template for atonement was already set. <laughs> Jesus just came and made it the final one. He says, yeah, for the givers of sin, there had to be shedding of, shedding of blood. And blah, blah. He said, this is the final one. It's the last time we're doing this. Yes, yes. The last time we're doing this. All right. This, this, this. Take that template. We're done with that. All right. Um, there has to be this turning. And the church has been sliding into so many social and sensationalized sort of uh, practices. Um, this need for this for him to pour out his spirit. Yes. Upon all flesh, um, we have to deal with that word afterwards. We have to repent. Yes, yes. We have to repent. We have to repent. I, I just, uh, I want to pick up on uh, your statement. Um, it, it's so uh, interesting. I um, heard we have a generation of people, they, they, they want to pick up the mantle. They want to pick up the mantle. I want to pick up... Elijah's mantle, it, 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 yeah. that, that's the template. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, they don't want to pick up his sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> no, they don't. They want the mantle. Yeah. But they don't want the sackcloth and ashes. Yeah, that's true. And, 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 and that's a man he like us. He prayed just like us. And, and I think that um, people don't want that. And, and I think that the essence, it, it, I want to just breeze right in, but it's, it's going to cost us. Yeah. It's going to cost us. It's, and, 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 and what you said uh, before is very interesting because Jesus gave us the word in Mark. He said, this is a daily thing with you that you deny yourself. You take up your cross and you follow me. So I'm daily dying every day. I'm daily t taking up the cross, which again is death to my self life. And I'm following him. So the question that goes back that the reason why we're here now at this time, and this is what I believe, I guess I could say it's my opinion. I think the only reason that God has allowed us to be here at this time is that we can do that commission to go out preach, declare the gospel, make disciples, teaching them to observe all things. And in order for us to make disciples, and he gave it to all of us, not just to the preacher, you, you have to be a disciple before you can make one. That's right. <laughs> That's almost we we're not doing a good job making because I think in a, in, in a lot of ways, we, 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 we're not being one. Oh, God. <laughs> Good. You can't yeah. you can't make something you 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 you're not. Right. And that was the first thing. So, you know, I took this, I said, this is very interesting. Every day of my life, 
deny myself. Every day of my life, take up a cross, death, join with him. And every day of my life, I'll follow him. My ears will be open to hear him and he'll direct me. That, that is our everyday life and model. And I think that we haven't got to that point because what we have in our churches today is a, an expression of self. It's not a denial of self. It, 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 it's, it's, instead of being a, a dependent, we are independent. And it's just everywhere. We, 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 we're, we're not, what is it? Narcissistic. Narcissistic. Not narcissistic, excuse me. Yeah. It, when we look, everything's about self. The, the, the book of Ephesians talks about that God said, I'm going to gather all things in the heaven and in the earth in Jesus. Everything He's going to be the center. And that's got to be the expression of when we gather together, Jesus has to be the center. Okay. Well, let's bring Sister Terry in. This is pretty heavy stuff here. And I hope we can get a part two out of Pastor Goddard. <laughs> hey, Pastor Goddard, it's so good to have you here, sir. You're one of my favorite teachers, along with these other uh, men that are here. And I know you're not able to read the comments, but everyone is just saying how happy they are to see you Thank and you. talking about your teaching and how you have blessed them. And so we're so very uh, blessed to have you here and we appreciate uh, you taking your time, sir. So, okay, <clears throat> again, another heavy session. This whole rebellion piece, this uh, 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 narcissistic people. Um, but there was one question that I do wanna ask you to explain and then we'll we'll go a little deeper because some of us feel the weight but we still don't know how and now we feel garner we thought we needed to um deliver the next generation and now we're here and wait a minute we may have to straighten ourselves out and become <laughs> disciples first and i do want to get into the how because i do believe that the heaviness drops on us, but we get a little confused. But first, Pastor Ghana, one of the people asked, could you talk about this substituting broken systems? What did you mean when you said that's what we're doing? Well, I, I, was, I was actually talking in uh, Jeremiah when um, the prophet was talking to the people. Is um, I don't know if I could find it. It was in the... Uh, I think it was in the second chapter. Uh, he said this. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. It's Je Jeremiah 2.13, if they get a chance to read it. Okay. He said, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed them out cist cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. And that's what I was talking about. And, and, he, and he says, these two evils, the first one, that you've forsaken me. You think you can live without me. You think you can make it without me. You think you can be independent without me. All right? And then, that's bad enough. He says, now you've hewed out your own systems, your own systems and things that you think that will carry you through and make you through. And he says, they can't hold water wow okay thank you sir so <clears throat> we talked a little bit about david right he was the one who said it's against you and you only have i sinned um but it wasn't until uh nathan pointed it out to him that he was able to get to that repentive spirit so what what is the job of the modern day Nathans and how can they start trying to point people to see that they are in a, a state of rebellion or a state of self, which is a form of idol worship on its own? I, I'm always amazed at the Nathan's management of David. 
Um, I think that's probably first stage uh, comment. And I'm sure Pastor Elliot, Pastor God will comment on it. Uh, he, he was careful not to mismanage the fact that he was God's choice. Mm -hmm. He's very careful with that. And, um, and he kind of brought him to a place of self-awareness rather than judging him. Mm. Um, he brought him to a place of self-awareness. Um, this era is a little less restrictive, a little judgmental. Um, we're heavy handed with, uh, we mismanage the anointing of God. We mislabel the anointing of God. Um, and Nathan was careful. He was mm. careful with David. And in David's awareness, David's awareness, uh, he was brought to a place of repentance. He was brought to a place of repentance. He became aware. He says, oh, this is me. Which <laughs> means that you can be anointed. You can be called. You can yes. be full of capacity and still miss this thing. You can miss it. You can miss it. Pastor? I, 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 you know, it's the most scary thing um, when, I, when I think about this, this was at least eight to nine months, you, you know, uh, he committed the sin, had the baby, and he wasn't even aware where he was yeah. until, until the prophet came. And I think that's the, one of the, 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 the 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 main things about repentance is that it has to come through conviction by the spirit of god so it's not so much uh, 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 like you said we we we're judging but there's there's a convincing inside yeah. you know what I mean? that we actually get to see ourselves and i think that's the most uh, uh, you know in 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 in, in an important thing, and I say, and I always tell the people, it's not bad. It's not bad that when you you know, just like in Revelations, that Jesus, it, it, it says in, in Revelation, he's walking through the churches. He's walking through so every everything that he says. He's looking at it. It's not bad that he shows us where we are because it's giving us opportunity to get get right, and that's why we're here. He's working on us continuously. <laughs> Because everything that we don't get right down here, we're giving the devil an advantage to use it against us. Wow. Wow. Well, Sister Terry, uh, Pastor Ellie, I'm going to pass the, uh, the remaining of our programming to you. Pastor Don, I'm hoping we can get you uh, to come back and we want to keep talking about this a little more. This is really getting very substantive. I'm getting convicted. <laughs> I think me too, me too. And, uh, and uh, I ask that you, you pray for me. I'm going to work on this eye a little bit. And um, Pastor Elliot, I'll see you all next time. All right. God bless you all, Pastor. Thanks. Okay. Mr. Sister Terry, you're the best. Church family, I love you all. See you Sunday. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Lady T, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I was coughing there. I didn't want y'all to <clears throat> hear that. Um, so I, I was just reminding our church family, make sure you pray for our pastor. So uh, uh, again, I say, and I, we're thick-headed, um, what what do we need to do? So so we're hearing it, but what what is it? What starts that repentance, right? Because the power is in that repentance. That's the, if we do this and we turn, God just might, we don't know. Yeah, yes, but, yes. but what we heard is if we don't, we're going to die. Yes, yes, yes. So, so how do we do it? I'm telling you, how do you, how do we get to repentance? What, what's going to help us? What, how do we do it? There's not a magic bullet. Right. Right. There, there's so, so I don't think it's necessarily just one thing. Um, I think conviction happens, right, with, with the person that that understands, that has the fear of God, um, that is in awe of the reality of God, right? Anyone that is awed by God, mm. uh, when that person is 
uh, uh, commits wrongdoing, um, something happens, right? Something is, is struck in, in, in even in the conscience of that person where there's a realization that something is wrong and that's where confession has to take place. So, so I think that, that, and that's another component, a follow-up component is that confession is a precondition for uh, repentance. Yes. You cannot repent unless you confess your wrongdoing, your right. sin. So, so that, and that's part of the acknowledgement. Um, you know, and, and one can acknowledge that, that, that wrong has been done, but if that wrong has not been confessed unto God, then something is missing. Yes. So, so I think, you know, th there's several pieces here. Yes. There's another piece, I think, mm -hmm. and that is that, that when we turn to the self, as mm -hmm. Pastor Garner has said, when we turn to the self, that in itself has negative consequences. Right? <laughs> And sometimes there's some people whose lack of conviction mm -hmm. necessitates the consequences right. so that that person can realize that confession needs to happen. In other words, they need a spanking. Mm -hmm. They need a spanking in order for them to return to God. Right. Mm -hmm. So and this is these are the type that that um, where crisis needs to happen for them to return to the to the church and return to the altar. That should not be the case, but oftentimes that is the case. Right. Yeah. So I think that that if you if you look at Joel, that's the whole uh storyline going through, right? First there's this there's consequences and so yeah. the locusts came, but then we need you to repent. There must be repentance and then of course we get the restoration. But but I think where I'm stuck is, how do I recognize it? I can't confess something if I don't even recognize it for what it is. So mm -hmm. what brings that to me? What, what, what brings, and it's not me, I'm saying the, the right. church as a whole, I don't know that everybody is tuning in on Tuesday saying, Lord, help us. We are in a desperate state. Right, right, so right. how do we get there? All right. I just want to give you a, another scripture. I keep this with me now, um, and and I there it, there there is a general uh, position that we have to have now. I think during these desperate times, just like when I said, "Lord, you have to revive us." I have to realize, for me, Lord, there's more. You've got more for me. I, I, mm. I'm, I, you, you know, I'm not. You bless me. You're blessing me now. But there's something in me that wants more of you. And the, the thing that uh, fascinated me was the fact that at the end of Paul's life, at the end of his life, when he's writing in Philippians, he's saying, not that I have apprehended him, not that I've arrived, but I'm forgetting those things that I'm pressing. I'm, there's still a drive in him. I, I want more of God. And I think that's what, you know, people, for the most part, are seeking God's hand. They're not seeking his face. Mm. They want the blessings that he mm. has. They don't want him. So I think we have to change now. Say, Lord, I don't care if you don't give me anything. I want the more of you. I want more of you. And um, I was saying about that scripture, it's in Isaiah 57. In 15, again, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite, humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Mm. So, so, so my approach to God is now, it, it, I'm not discounting what he's done. I, I'm grateful, but I'm saying I need more of you. I've got to have more of you. I, 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 I it, it's, it's, um, uh, um, when I said, uh, in Revelations, Ephesians, they left their first love. When he says you left your first love, it is. That's the first time you ever came in 
contact with love. You, you, you already understood physical love, uh, uh, Eros love, man for a woman, Storge love, family love, and even Philadelphia love, friend love. But the love that God introduced us to is a foreign love to the natural love, a love that we, 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 we never understood because there was nothing about us that would merit that he would love us. He just loved us out of his own uh, uh, goodness. And now he said, you're separated from that. So I'm grabbing, I want that. I, I, I'm I looking for that. Lord, I want more of that. I'm, 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 it's not like I'm not glad about what you've done, but I think every time God touches you, every time God uh, blesses you, he always leaves room for more. Mm. I'm not satisfied is what I'm saying. I'm hungry for more of you. I'm, he's blessed me immense, but I'm hungry for more of you. And I think that's what we have to have. That that hunger has to be alive in the church today. Not hunger for power, not hunger for fame, not hum, hunger for position, but hunger for him. Mm. Just him. Yeah, and, the face of God. That was wonderful, that analogy. Not, not hunger for the hand of God, uh, but hunger for the face of face God. Of for us to be true God chases, yes, yes, constantly yes. chasing yes. after him. <clears throat> All right, so, and, and I'm going to keep driving, and I know I'm going to <laughs> I don't mean to drive you crazy. So we have to chase after him. We have yeah. to have this hunger for him. Um, I, I heard we need to be dis disciples before any discipleship can happen. Um, there needs to be this turning um from this rebellious state. And I don't know that we recognize we're in a rebellious state. And 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 some will, you know, say, well, COVID has tried to wake us up to show us because the parallels to Joel, then what he was talking about yeah. and what we're dealing with is um, uh, supernatural. Yes. And so what's next? Where, where do we go from here? Has enough of the church recognized the state we're in? Do you think we're there? I don't think we're there. I don't, I, I, I personally don't think that we we really got that that message because it, the the one thing I could say about what uh, the COVID pandemic did was it gave us an opportunity, and I believe. God was behind it to look at ourselves, for me to look at me. You know what I mean? She shut everything down. Mm -hmm. it, 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 and, and for me to look and say, wait a minute, things were shut down. I couldn't go where I you know, used to go. My activities were stopped. And still, when I look at myself, I didn't pray more. Mm. I didn't read more. I didn't study more. You, you know what I mean? So, so I'm looking, wait a minute, because, you know, I was too busy before, but he shut us down. So, so I got to go back and look at myself, wait a minute, what is my priority? What is most important to me? Do I really love your word like I said? Do I really love you like I said? Mm. You know, and, 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 and we can get, see, we get confused sometimes because we can get in the service and sing, you know, and the beautiful words. I love God. Lord, I love you. I love and he said, wait a minute. The only way I'm going to know you, you love me if you keep my word. So we love him emotionally. But he said, that doesn't mean anything. Because, again, he said, many will come and say such and such and such and such. So it's it's to me it's it's a time of uh, of me looking at myself and, and saying, do I really believe everything that I said? And if I do, then why am I doing what I'm doing now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna end. That's again, this has um, been very sobering, but I believe by I can judge Pastor Garner by how many questions we get whether they're absorbing it. And we're not getting many questions. We're getting many, my lords, and oh my gosh, and, and yes, Lord, and forgive us, Father. So so hopefully this is settling in our hearts and we're, we're going to look for more of him. Again, I love that seeking his face, 
not his hand, not what can you do for me, God, and help me, Lord. But truly, if you never do another thing, Lord, I just want to I want to know you better. I just want to get a little closer right. uh, to you. And um, and there and there is his will. Right. When you when you're close up to him, yes. he'll reveal a few things to you. And and he just might. Who knows? Yes. yes. He just might. Who knows? Well, look, right. look, where, where else can we go? Mm. Yes. Peter said, yo, he, Jesus <laughs> said, will you leave? He said, there's no place for us to go. This is it. Yeah. I can't go any. I can't go back. This is it. And so, I, you know, I think even like I heard pastor say one time, you know, he said, we're going to come back in the church. There are all kinds of prayer, but there's a prayer that, that we need to have as people are crying out prayer. We're not asking God for anything. We're not asking them. We got situations, but it's you. It's it's a yearning. It's a long, just a cry. Jesus, if it's just, gee, I need, you know what I mean? Until we just get consumed with that, I think that's what we have to get back as a church because we're thinking too much of, I need this, I need that. And it's like, you want what's in his hand. You don't want him. Mm. All righty. Um, uh, again, I, I don't have much questions because I know it's all settling on us. Pastor Garner, again, uh, the way you put uh, the word and explain it to us, it leaves really no ambiguity. And if you say you don't know, it's because you don't want to know. And so I, I appreciate how you your deliver and how you teach. And so, uh, you know, pastor's off. I'm going to take executive uh, command and say, we need to have you back, sir. We absolutely need to continue this discussion. And um, it's been great having you. Um, and, and God bless you, sir. And hopefully you'll be able to clear your schedule and come back. Pastor Ellie, uh, we're going to put it in your hands. God bless you, sir. God bless you, men of God. Pastor, I know you're in the back listening. We love you, sir, and we're holding you up. You are always in our prayers. Thank God for everybody. Have a good one. Guys, put questions. If you do have questions, put it in there. Remember, read all of Joel through and through. It's only three short chapters, so you're able to uh, hear and understand what the men of God are uh, delivering to us. God bless you all. Take care, sir. Amen. Blessings to you all. Please read chapter three in the book of Joel. We want to return to this book next week. We want to have Pastor Garner again, and hopefully we can have him next week. If you agree with us, with Lady Terry and I, right there in the chat box, say, come back, Pastor Garner. Come back. We want to have you back again so you can just share your insights and wisdom. We will continue to pray for our pastor. He will be with us this Easter Sunday, and we hope that you can join us in the gathering, in the sanctuary, to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Friday, we will have our Good Friday service. We ask you to join us and celebrate the name of Jesus. We ask that at this time that you can give to the Lord. This is now the time of giving. And we are givers. We give to the Lord because the Lord gives us so much. And we give a little bit back to the Lord because that is a sign of obedience and a, a sign of gratitude. So if you are grateful to the Lord, take this moment and give uh, to the Lord. And there are several ways that you can give your offerings. And we, we always uh, put it up and we have it there for you. You can uh, give through PayPal. You can give through Givelify, Zelle, and Cash App. Uh, there, So there are several ways that you can give and do so freely. We always, uh, at Allen Memorial, we put a checkbox uh, there in the chat box, uh, a, a, a check mark, I should say. And uh, so if you have given, feel free there to put uh, that check mark uh, showing that you have given to the Lord. Amen, amen. I see all of you there putting your, your check marks. Bless you, bless you, bless you. The Lord, the Lord. Uh, blesses the cheerful giver, and we thank you for giving unto the Lord today. The Lord is indeed good, and his mercy endures forever. 
We bless all of you. We thank you, Allen Memorial, and we thank our wonderful pastor, none other than Pastor Carlton C. Sproul. We will be praying uh, for complete restoration and healing uh, those allergies that are uh, bothering his eye, but we will pray to the Lord. The Lord is good, and he will be good as he always is to our pastor. We love you, First Lady Carol Sproul. We love you, Executive Pastor Wilder. We love you, Allen Memorial. Let us uh, pray unto the Lord as we uh, now dismiss ourselves from this gathering. We thank you again for joining us. Uh, pray with me at this time. Lord, Father, we are grateful, grateful, Lord, for this day that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for you and the gift of salvation. Lord, we cry out unto you because we need you, Lord. We need you. And at this time, we need a revival. Lord, we will do our part, Lord, so you can just show up in our lives and do the wonders, Lord, that you always do in our lives. We thank you even now. We proclaim this victory over our lives, Lord and Lord, and we proclaim it is so by saying amen and amen. Say amen. Let it be so. We know that the Lord will bless us. Allen Memorial, have a wonderful night, and may the Lord be with you always. <laughs>